so in this lecture series we can we shall learn about buckling analysis what are the theoretical aspects of buckling analysis and how we can calculate a buckling load of a column under various type of end conditions in the stat software so buckling analysis is not just restricted to the columns buckling analysis we do it for columns we do it for beams we do we can do it for girders we can do it for uh, tall and slender structures let us suppose we can talk about the cooling towers or we can talk about the chimneys so all these structures for all these structures we can do the and we do need to do the buckling analysis so to start this lecture series i shall first of all introduce you to the basic concept that is uh, how we can what are the theoretical aspects of doing push uh, this buckling an analysis and uh, this lecture you must have covered in your college uh, also but just as a revision i am again explaining all these things to you so this is basically a eiler's column formula so that is for buckling of columns for so for columns eiler gave us a formula that uh, the column failed by buckling when their critical load is reached and long columns can be analyzed with eiler column formula that is f is equal to n into pi square into e into i divided by l square where f is the allowable load the units can either be pound or newton n is factor accounting for the end conditions so that factor is very important that i shall explain you in, in next few minutes pi is nothing but 3.14 e is nothing but modulus of elasticity it can either be in pound per inch square or newton per mm square i is the moment of inertia it can either be in uh, inches or either it can either be in uh, meter to the power 4 and l is nothing but length of the column it can either be in inches or meter now what about this n uh, variable here so this is the graph that eiler has proposed for calculating the n value so here there are various end conditions so under this condition here we can see that the column is pivoted on both ends or we can see that the column is hinged on both the ends so under this condition n is nothing but 1 here this is in this condition it is saying that the both ends are fixed so when the both ends are fixed the n value becomes equal to 4 third is one end fixed and the other end is hinged so if one end is fixed and other end is hinged then the n value is 2 and after that this uh, when one end is fixed and other end is free n is nothing but 0.25 so this is the basic uh, picture that you must have studied in your college uh, lectures also and uh, again i am repeating uh, this is the formula here in some uh, books it is written as pcr that is uh, buckling and load so under that uh, it is nothing but n into pi square into e into i divided by l square and this is the, these are the various end conditions for to determine the value of n so this is uh, just a simple uh, example here that the author has given here the website is engineeringtoolbox.com you can open it in your web browser and uh, study this eiler column formulas also so uh, the basic uh, formula is that any column with length 5 meter is fixed in both ends so the condition is this condition here that is when the both ends are fixed so under this condition n is equal to 4 and uh, column is made up of aluminum i beam 7 into 4 and a half into 5.8 with moment of inertia 5.78 into the power 4 modulus of elasticity of aluminum is 69 gpa that is 69 10 to the power 9 pascal and factor of uh, column fixed in both end is 4 obviously for both end fixed this uh, n is equal to 4 so moment of inertia it has converted into the metric units so this uh, 241 into 10 to the power minus 8 meter to the, to the power 4 so eiler buckling formula is n into pi square into e into i divided by l square so this is the n that is n is equal to 4 into pi square into e e is modulus of elasticity that it had convert uh, calculated here 241 into 10 to the power minus 8 into i that is 69 uh, gpa 69 10 to the power 9 pascal divided by meet, uh, the length that is 5 meter square so after that we can check that the eiler buckling load is coming out to be 263 kN so uh, you can uh, calculate it for various end conditions also so let us say of under all these conditions 
when your column is uh, pivoted on both the ends that is n is equal to 1 then in that case the your isla buckling load shall be nothing but 263 divided by 4 cause in that case 4 is equal to 1 so it should be in the range of this uh, 263 divided by 4 kilonewton approximately 65 kilonewton or 66 kilonewton so when your uh, one end is fixed and other end is rounded then in that case it shall be 263 divided by 2 that is 131.5 kilonewton so this this was the basic example so i hope the your the formula is clear to you that how you can what is the basic formula to calculate the buckling load for column and how you can calculate it in, as per your the manual calculations so as i had discussed earlier also that is this buckling analysis is not just restricted to the columns it can also be done for beams or girders etc so under the next lecture uh, I shall uh, under the next lecture we shall uh, model a simple column with this particular end condition and then we can uh, we shall calculate the buckling and uh, buckling load factor in the start software so in this lecture we shall learn how we can do the buckling analysis practically in the start software so first of all we shall go to the editor file here and we shall enter units as meter and kilonewton joint coordinates we can select it at origin we can select this zone uh, node go to translation repeat option select global direction as y Def default stress spacing we can select it as uh, 1.2 meters number of steps we can select it as 10 we can go to this link steps option and then left click on ok selecting the uh, dimension option here we can see that the total height of the column is now 12 meters so property we can define it as circular section let us suppose we go we want to go for 150 mm and material is steel so this is a 150 mm uh, solid steel column that we can left click on assign to view uh, there's no need to specification support under the support option we can select uh, this type of option here that is uh, we can select the bottom end is fixed and the top end is free so we can left click on create and then left click on fixed here top node we can uh, select it as uh, free so we don't need to assign any support uh, option here after that we can go to the load and definition and left click on load cases details here we can select it as none and title we can select it as uh, buckling analysis so left click on add here here we can go to this nodal load option fy we can select it as minus one kilonewton left click on assign to view uh, left click on this uh, delete option again do the same procedure f5 we can select it as minus 1 and assign this 100 kilo, uh, 1 kilonewton loading to the selected node here so material is defined loading is also defined supporting condition is defined specification is defined and property is defined after that we need to go to the analysis and here we need to select perform buckling analysis option number of iteration we can select it as 25 left click on add here and then just do the analysis here so left click on this post processing option here here we can see that in the previous lecture uh, th there was this pushover option but uh, right now we are doing the buckling analysis so left click on this buckling analysis option here so here you will see the various number of modes so here right now we have four number of modes so when we left click on mode number one here buckling factor is 87.284 for number 2 again it is 87.284 for number 3 it is 785.174 and buckling mode shape is like this and for number 4 it is again 785.174 and buckling shape is like this now you must be thinking what exactly are these numbers here so if we want to calculate the buckling load so under that case basically it is showing us the buckling factor is in the fundamental buckling mode is 87.284 so this number 
this buckling factor here 87.284 we need to multiply with the loading that we had applied on the top that is 1 so the buckling load that is this particular value here this f value here as per the stat software is 1 into 87.284 that is 87.284 kilo newton only so as per the stat for this type of arrangement for 12 meter height and for 150mm die and material as steel and for one end condition as fixed and other end as free the buckling load is coming out to be 87.284 kilo newton now if we want to check it as per our manual calculations also so it is not that difficult because uh, we can select a die of steel column it is 0 0.15 meter so in the buckling formula here we need to calculate the first of all e value so the e value of the structural steel is 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square so 1 2 3 4 and 5 so this is the e value now i that is moment of inertia moment of inertia for a circular uh, structural steel for circular section is pi into d4 that is diameter to the power 4 divided by 64 so we can take it as 3.14 into this value to the power of 4 and here we can select it as 150 mm to make the thing simple So 3.14 into h7 to the power 4 we can put it inside a bracket this needs to be divided by 64 so this is the moment of inertia mm to the power 4 so uh, n into pi square n value for our case is 0 0.25 so under this condition here n into pi square into e that we have considered i we had considered and l we need to consider so l value here is 12 meters so that is basically 12,000 mm so f we can consider it as pi square into e into i into n divided by L square so it is coming out to be 85.031 Newton or we can say 85 divided by 1000 so it is coming out theoretically as 85 kilo newton and as per the stat you will see that the buckling factor is 87.284 so we can consider some much uh, approximation here also so value is almost near to the what we shall calculate as per the theoretical option here so this excel file i shall attach in for your consideration also So this excel file I shall attach for your consideration also so you can uh, calculate or put various options here and then similarly you can uh, put the various options here and then check various results also. So with this lecture I hope your basic understanding of buckling analysis and I expect that you must be much more comfortable with the buckling analysis of a simple structural steel column. Now if we uh, we can change the end conditions also so before changing the end conditions i want to show you one more website here so under this uh, there's a website called amesweb.com so it also again shows us the various uh, again basic concept of this pushover analysis here there's a calculator also so under this column buckling calculator you can put the length cross section area second moment of area that is moment of inertia distance and interval axis is centricity design factors models of elasticity yield strength compressive yield strength applied forces etc you can put the end conditions also so when you uh, calculate as per these uh, conditions you will see that critical load of failure is coming out to be approximately 77.2 kilonewton 
so against the uh, stat output which is showing approximately 87 the theoretical value is much more near to this what we had calculated in the stat basically why this results are not much nearer because there are various other parameters also which were not considered in the theoretical calculation of the buckling load so and this is just a simple basic math that you can uh, do by your end so uh, you, you must be saying that why basically we need to do the buckling analysis in the stat even if we can calculate all these things manually also basically in real life the questions are not that simple so you m might be having some various complex structural steel sections or uh, you might be having a various uh, like for example we, sp uh, we can take into consideration about the cooling towers or various other slender or like chimney structures so on th in those structures these calculations might not be much relevant so that is why uh, the purpose of this lecture was to teach you about the basics of the buckling analysis and uh, i hope the you are now much more comfortable with it so in the buckling analysis lecture series until now we have learned how we can do the how what are the theoretical aspects of buckling analysis how we can do the buckling analysis for a simple column structure now in this lecture we shall learn how we can do the buckling analysis of a uh, girder so uh, we shall model a girder in the uh, with the help of this plate and that and we shall do the fm analysis that is finite element method analysis and then we shall assess what exactly is the buckling what are the various buckling mode shapes and what is the buckling behavior of that particular girder so please open the editor file here and enter the units as meter and kilonewton joint coordinates as 1 0 and 0 after that what we can do here is that we can press shift plus k option and then we can select uh, uh, translation repeat along x default stress pressing we can select it as 0 0.1 here and select it as a link steps option here then again y 0 0.1 and link steps so now we can go to this add uh, plate option here delete the beams in your structure now select this particular plate here and press translation repeat select the default step spacing as uh, 0.1 meter and number of steps we can take it as 50 that is the with 50 into 0 0.1 the length of the girder shall be 5 meters default stress pressing we can select it as x and then just left click on ok here so here we can assess the length of this uh, geometry here we can delete the last plate here so now the length is 5 meters now if we want the height of this girder to be approximately let us suppose 500 mm so 0 0.1 into 500 what we need to do is that we need to select all the plates here select the global direction as y step spacing we can, we can select it as 1 and number of steps we can select it as uh, number of steps is 5 and then left click on ok here so now the height of uh, this girder is 600 mm so if we want the height to be let us suppose 500 mm so just read this top plate sections here so now we have drawn the web of a i section now what we need to do is that we do need to select these particular two uh, nodes here and then select z as 0 0.1 and then left click on ok here now we need to go to this add four noted plate option here and then just draw a plate here and then select this uh, plate here and then uh, select this translation repeat option global direction as z if we want the flange to be in the range of let us suppose 400 mm so we can set default stress pressing as 0 0.1 meter and number of steps as 1 here so this is now drawn similarly what we can do we can just and uh, again do the translation repeat option here 
and then select as x and number of steps we can select it as 49 default step spacing we can select as 0 0.1 and then just left click on ok so now the half uh, flange is now modeled after that what we need to do is that we do need to select all these plates again here and then just go to this generate mirror option mirror we can select it uh, about this particular point here we can select it as copy and plane we can select it as xy plane and then left click on ok here so now the complete top flange is now drawn here now we again uh, need to repeat this top flange on the bottom flange also to make a complete eye section so to save our time what we can do is that we can select the plates cursor here and then just select translation repeat global direction is y default step, step spacing is minus 0 0.5 meter and then just left click on okay so now all the top flange bottom flange everything is now drawn so we should make sure that all the uh, plates are properly connected so we can go to tools and check improperly connected plates so no overlapping plates are found similarly we can again check for various other options also so we can check for warped plates so no plates are warped at uh, any uh, wrong angle so the modeling is now correct after that what we need to do is that we need to go to the property here we need to enter the thickness let us suppose the uh, thickness of web of this particular eye section is 5 mm so we can select 0 0.005 meter here material we can enter it as steel and then left click on add here so after that we can select all the plates here and then left click on assign to selected plates here after that again we can go to the thickness plate element thickness uh, let us suppose the flange of this eye section is in the range of 12 mm so we can select it as 0 0.012 material we can select it as steel and then left click on add here so we can check the 3d view to see that whether everything is correct or not so now everything is correct plate thickness is 5 mm and uh, flange uh, sorry um, web thickness is 5 mm flange thickness is 12 mm after that we need to go to the support section here here we can enter here fixed sections let us suppose the beam is cantilever here about this particular uh, point here so we can model this cantilever beam here and check the buckling behavior of this particular uh, 5 meter long eye shaped steel girder so now properties are assigned specification we don't need uh, any specification here supports are assigned loads and definition we can left click on add here we can enter the buckling load here and then we can select uh, suppose this particular joint here and then we can go to this nodal load option we can select the global direction as z and let us suppose we are applying six ton horizontal loading at this particular point here so we can left click on assign to selected nodes and yes similarly we can model some uh, vertical loading also so we can go to this uh, nodal load option again here we can select it as minus 10 so buckling loading are also assigned after that we need to go to the analysis and here we need to select the perform buckling analysis number of iteration we can select it as 30 and then left click on add here and then after that we need to go to the analyze and run analysis option so now if we are checking for the post processing mode here here we can see the buckling uh, shapes here so this is the fundamental buckling factor that we are getting and this is the fundamental buckling mode shape this is the second mode shape this is the third mode shape and this is the fourth mode shape so this is just a simple uh, theoretical exercise i must say to assess the different buckling mode shapes of uh, this particular ice ice tape steel girder here so i hope things are now clear to you that how you can access the fundamental uh, buckling uh, mode shape 
and fundamental buckling load factor so whatever we are loading uh, we are applying here it needs the VAT value needs to be multiplied with 1.804 to assess the uh, buckling loading as we had done in the previous lecture also so we can again go to this post processing again here we can left click on this plate section here to assess the different types of stresses for example let us say we want to assess the max one versus one miss stresses here so we can left click on apply here so this this is the fundam uh, this uh, max one miss stresses obviously when the loading is being applied here so uh, this area is showing very high concentration of stresses here so i hope uh, the things are now clear that how you can uh, perform the buckling analysis of us eye girder and how you can assess the fundamental buckling mode shape of a steel eye girder similarly you can uh, draw various other other types of arrangements also to assess the different buckling mode shape so in the next lecture uh, that shall be the last lecture in this lecture series in that i shall model a simple uh, cooling tower with the help of uh, this uh, stat option only and uh, then we can check how we can assess the buckling mode shape of that particular cooling tower arrangement. So in the previous lectures we have learned much about the buckling analysis and how we can uh, do the buckling analysis simple eye section and simple eye gutter section. Now if you want to do the buckling analysis for uh, let us suppose a cooling tower. So uh, designing a cooling tower and analyzing that is a particular is a I must say if I went into teaching that particular things it may it may go for seven to eight hours only. So uh, making things short and this lecture as uh, the master point of this lecture series was that the buckling analysis. So we shall model a simple cooling tower and we shall attempt to do the buckling analysis of that particular cooling tower. So start to gives us an option to uh, input the cooling tower uh, with the help of this uh, structure wizard. So to open that before doing that we can uh, enter the units as meter and kilonewton in the editor file and we can go to the geometry and here we can left click on run structure wizard. So under this option, we you will see that there are various types of prototypes models or saved user models. In the model type, we can select it as uh, surface and plate model. So here we can uh, get this option of cooling tower. So when we left click and double click here on this cooling tower option here, top diameter it is asking about top diameter, throat diameter, height of tower, distance from top of throat, di division along long circumference and division along height. So all these units are in meter. So top diameter if we want to go for let us suppose 50, throw diameter we can enter it as 45, height of tower we can select it as let us suppose 90 meters and distance from top uh, from throat we can select it as 20 meters, division along circumference we can select it as 50, along height we can again we can select it as 50 and then when we left click and apply it will show us the arrangement of the cooling tower here. So we can just uh, go to this file and save. And if we uh, went into closing this, uh, it will ask us whether we want to transfer much this prototype into the chart and when we left click on yes here, it will ask us about the coordinate on which that model needs to be embedded. So we can enter the origin here and when we left click on ok, that particular model will be imported here. So it, it shall save us a lot of time because otherwise if we want to model this type of cooling tower in the chart, it may take around 1 to 2 hours. So uh, we can go to the support sections here we can go to the fixed support I again repeat I am only teaching you how to do the buckling analysis in the uh, stat software for the cooling tower I am not teaching you to design it so we can go to the property section here left click on thickness thickness suppose we can select it as 300 mm the material we can enter it as concrete and we can left click on assign to view Support we had already entered. Loading and definition, we can enter the buckling analysis. So left click on this add here and when we can enter the nodal load option, we can select F FX, let us suppose 100 kN. So we can select uh, this particular node here. Assign to selected nodes and yes. So after that we can left click on analysis and when we, we can left click on perform buckling analysis number of iterations we can left uh, take it as 50 and uh, all the options are covered here 
analysis part is also given and then we can just go to the analyze and run analysis to do the buckling analysis of this type of particular cooling tower so we can go to the post processing mode here here again we shall enter the get the bus buckling analysis option so this is the fundamental buckling mode here this is second fundamental buckling mode the third and fourth fundamental buckling mode here so although the behavior is of this uh, cooling tower under the buckling is not that good so what we can do as an experiment is that we can go to the property section here we can decrease the thickness of this uh, here this cooling tower here and we can increase the loading let us say we increase it to 10 times here what we can do as an alternate arrangement is that we can remove the buckling load from this point to this point here so now if we want to see the buckling shape and buckling factors so we can go to the post processing mode here under the buckling option you will see that now that particular behavior which is showing at this particular point here is now occurring here so this is the fundamental buckling mode and buckling factor is coming to approximately 8 this is the second this is the third and this is the fourth uh, buckling mode for this particular cooling tower here so under various types of loadings and under various permutation combination you can access the uh, behavior of the cooling tower and uh, how you can calculate the buckling factor of this particular uh, arrangement here so again if this type of arrangement uh, you are uh, drawing or you are modeling in your real life it's not again i repeat it's not that simple to design this type of cooling tower arrangement there are various specific or professional engineers who are doing nothing except design of cooling towers so that is how much complicated it is and uh, I must say that various types of failures had also occurred while designing the cooling towers, especially uh, when we ignore the eddy effects of winds or when we ignore the wind turbulence or wind dynamics or gust factors approaches. So in that particular case, the uh, uh, wind loading is very harmful for the cooling tower arrangement. And uh, as a caution of practice, what uh, current standard practice is that most of them are going for the wind tunnel analysis before they construct the real cooling towers. So that is uh, the caution which we need to take around cooling tower is that whatever buildings are near to the cooling towers that we model that in the wind tunnel anal analysis and no further modification is required around that particular cooling tower arrangement because we do not want any unaccounted winds to put loading on our cooling tower and disturb its behavior so this was just a simple general lecture to explain you about how to you can calculate the buckling factor for a, a particular cooling tower so now uh, i shall finish this lecture series you can uh, read the theoretical parts on the internet also or on the nptl regarding the buckling analysis approaches so if you have any doubt feel free to ask in the question and answers sections